being here. When Gail first asked me to speak here, one of the main questions he asked was about inspiration. And I really had to sit down and think about what really inspired me until I realized that I actually answered that question for myself a few years ago. Back in 2009, as Gail just said, I was working in investment banking. And I've done it for a little bit and already realized this is not really what I want to do. I did my 80, 90 hour weeks and mostly got up in the mornings and said, I'm not really looking forward to what I'm going to do today. So I started thinking why that is. And I remembered something I learned back in school, which uh, was Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. It's basically a pyramid um, or hierarchy, which starts at the very bottom with psychological needs, which include um, food you have to eat, which includes sleep, um, which includes sex as well, everything we have to do as human beings. The next thing is safety, then you have love, belonging, you have esteem and self-esteem, until you get to the highest level of the pyramid, which would be self-actualization. And I noticed that for myself, that with what I was doing, I could reach almost all of those levels, but the highest. Because self-actualization for me meant creation, and with what I was doing, I didn't feel like I really created something. I was yeah, more, um, um, I wasn't really believing in what I was doing, I have to say. And I said that I really wanted to do something somehow different. I wanted to create something out of nothing, or at least something transformative. So what, like everything you see here is really great, it's done by artists, but I realized I'm, I'm not I'm artistic enough. Um, to do something like that. Uh, for me, it came to entrepreneurship. Doing a business, uh, hopefully something disruptive. <laughs> so I um, started thinking what I could do, and luckily I had, some, had something on the side. With a friend of mine, we were selling anti-mosquito patches. It was patches you put on your arm, and you don't get bitten for one and a half days by mosquitoes. We were trying to sell those to institutions around the world. We wanted to print the logos on them and uh, well, talk to airlines and drugstore chains until we were invited by the Colombian military. So I managed to get a week off of um, work and flew to Bogota, where my business partner told me over dinner that, it, that he had a new idea. He wanted to print the logo of the company back then onto a laptop sleeve. And I didn't get it at first, but what he really talked about was combining mass customization with electronic devices. Now, mass customization is big. Many of you have seen it or used it. When you buy a new car, you can customize it. You can customize your t-shirts, you can customize your shoes, your cereal, your chocolate, you name it. And um, customization is also great for the environment because it's a just-in-time process, uh, which means it reduces risk, as products are only produced once they're actually ordered. Um, on the other hand, there's obviously a big market for laptop cases or laptop sleeves. So when back from Bogota, we started writing a business plan. And in the process of writing the business plan, I actually went to a vernissage. So an artist here from New York called Tom Christopher was actually exhibiting um, his artwork. It's really colorful, dynamic paintings of the street life in New York. And I thought it would be amazing to put his artwork on those cases. So that became part of um, the business plan, which is going to second need a glass of good water. So, excuse me. So we wrote the business plan, included this artist approach in there, and wrote the business plan so convincing that it really convinced us, but nobody else. <laughs> Actually, almost everyone told us not to do it, uh, but we thought we onto something. We thought we can now create something. It was actually what I was looking for. So we quit our jobs, flew over here to Brooklyn, and started it here in Brooklyn. Why Brooklyn? Well, we wanted to think big. We didn't want to just start it in Germany. We wanted to sell it everywhere at once. Now, that didn't make it easier. We were in a foreign country. We didn't have a visa. We had no idea of the product. So we had to travel to China a few times. We had no idea of the process. It was something nobody had done before. It was new. Um, was like mass customization was out there, but not for this product category. Um, and we had also no idea how to build a website. So instead of four months, as we wrote in the business plan, it actually took us almost a year to launch the product. And once it was out there, 
their sales didn't skyrocket, as we wrote in the business plan. Uh, they came in slow and um, almost too slow. So the first couple of years were difficult, if not very difficult. And many times we weren't sure if we should continue. Many people had or asked us and told us we should do something different. We get other like really good job offers. But in the end we said, no, we still believe we are onto something. This is what we want to do. And that's what, this was what I wanted to do. I wanted to create something. I'd started it, I didn't want to give up that fast and go back to something that didn't really inspire me. So one thing led to another. About a couple of months ago, we now celebrated the third year of our launch. We are now, as Gary said, not only based in Brooklyn, where we manufacture, we also manufacture in Germany. We have our head office now in Berlin. We have about 45 people. We sell to, well, um, anyone from the normal customer to corporates. We have large clients. We work with the embassies and HPs out there. And we also work with artists. So Tom Christopher, and I didn't manage to talk to him back at the art show, but I, once we had launched the website, I actually contacted him. He was one of the first artists we signed up. We have about 20 curated artists we work with, and um, they get a cut, and then we get the content, um, which is actually a great synergy. I brought some of the cases here, which I'd like to give around. Let's see. That's my phone. <laughs> so, we don't only do laptop cases, which are those here. We also moved, get this around, right? we moved into, and we were the first ones to also offer custom iPad and Kindle cases, which look like this. And for the sake of this event here, and actually that's the belief one which you see everywhere. Uh, amazing photography by Peter. Get this around. I moved also into phone cases, which hadn't had been out there before. There's a little more product in there if you want to. <laughs> um, and um, we moved into phone cases as well, and that uh, those had been out there, but because we started with a really most difficult product. We are the only ones actually having the entire range of products now. We are the only ones offering this product internationally. We're about to now go into Southeast Asia and um, also South America. For us, the next big thing is really to build an international brand for this. We have started so, uh, but it's difficult, of course. And there are a lot of rocks on the way, but um, I'm sure that, it's, um, that, that we're on the right track. Now, Looking back, I have to say it was very, very difficult, but I also have to say I do not remember the last time that I woke up in the morning and said, this is not what I want to do today. And that's why I can say it was all worth it. And this brings me to my question today here. When you wake up in the mornings, more often than not, do you think that what you're going to do at work today is what you actually want to do? And if you answer this question with no, Maybe think about what really inspires you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin, for this slide.